Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we will continue our discussion with the physics of semiconductor devices subject. And so far we have discussed uh, some of the basic concepts related to semiconductors and the different ways of classifying semiconductors into different categories. So in this video we are going to uh, focus our attention on the extrinsic semiconductors and uh, the fabrication of N and P type extrinsic semiconductors. So before that we will just revisit some basic things in a quick way. So semiconductor uh, is a substance which has resistance or conductance in between that of conductors and insulators and uh, the normally the resistivity it lies in between 10 to the power minus 4 to 0 0.5 ohm meter in terms of resistance uh, resistivity and conductivity you just take the reciprocal with uh, uh, Siemens per meter so examples silicon germanium selenium they are elemental or simple semiconductors other than that there can be compound semiconductors gallium arsenide indium phosphide alum aluminium gallium nitride a lot of that Next is classification of semiconductors. It is done on the basis of two, uh, you know, aspects. First, composition: simple compound, elemental, and compound semiconductors. Simple semiconductors are those which consist of one element, single element, which is silicon, germanium, uh, like uh, we just discussed. Silicon being the popular choice. Compound semiconductors consist of two or more elements. Gallium arsenide, indium phosphide, aluminium, gallium nitride, like that. Now, today's video is based on this, on this way of uh, this aspect. Everything related to doping. Okay, and uh, on the basis of doping, semiconductors can be divided into two categories intrinsic and extrinsic. Now, there are two ways actually in which the conductivity of semiconductors can be altered or two things that affect the conductivity of semiconductors first thing is temperature semiconductors have negative temperature coefficient of resistance they have inverse relationship with surrounding temperature as temperature increases resistivity or resistance decreases as temperature uh, decreases resistance increases okay we are not going to discuss about that we will discuss it in a separate video in this video we will discuss the second way of increasing the conductance or resistance or whatever altering its uh, current conduction property which is doping addition of impurity and it is the popular way Okay, the most you know used way of affecting the conductivity of semiconductors. Now, on the basis of doping, the extrinsic semiconductors can be further classified as n-type and p-type semiconductors. Now, what is this doping process? In a pure semiconductor, be it silicon, germanium which is called as intrinsic semiconductor so intrinsic semiconductors they are in the pure state with no impurity added to them no foreign element added to them if we add a certain amount of impurity especially pentavalent and trivalent impurities are used pentavalent impurity means elements with five valence electrons trivalent impurity are those with three valence electrons why three and five you will understand why three and five valence electron is very important so if we add certain amount small amount of these foreign elements or foreign impurity to a pure semiconductor the conductivity of semiconductors can be significantly affected so this impurity elements that are added to the intrinsic semiconductors are called as dopants 
and this process of injection injection of impurity is called as doping now first we'll discuss the fabrication of n type semiconductor so an n type semiconductor is formed when an intrinsic semiconductor be it silicon or germanium is doped with pentavalent impurity pentavalent impurity means five valence electrons Ele okay atoms with five valence electrons so why five valence electrons let's see so here we have intrinsic silicon we are considering only the outer orbit the outer valence band consisting of four valence electrons now this is the pentavalent impurity with five valence electrons so when a small amount of pentavalent impurity is added to silicon what happens is that four out of these five valence electrons of uh, arsenic uh, commonly used pentavalent impurity it forms covalent bonds with four of these valence electrons of silicon in this way okay four valence electrons of this pentavalent impurity they form covalent bonds with four valence electrons the total four valence electrons of silicon in this way so in this process four out of four valence electrons of silicon are utilized it has no more electrons left in its valence band all the electrons are used up in formation of covalent bonds with four of the four out of five valence electrons of this pentavalent impurity but one excess or extra electron is left behind which is not uh, you know which 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 is not which does not participate in this covalent bond formation process now this extra electron this excess electron this becomes free and is responsible for conduction in the semiconductor it contributes to the increase in the conductivity of the semiconductor and becomes a charge carrier this extra electron so this pentavalent impurity it is actually donating an extra electron to this intrinsic silicon so this pentavalent impurity is called as donor impurity because it is donating an extra electron to the intrinsic semiconductor thereby contributing to its increased conductivity okay so the majority charge carriers for n type semiconductor is electron which is a negative charge that's why the name n type semiconductors okay n for negative negative charge okay so you understood the formation of n type semiconductors in this way now the formation of p type semiconductors so p type semiconductors are those that are doped with trivalent impurity okay trivalent impurity three valence electrons in the outer valence band example boron gallium indium aluminium they are commonly used so now let us see how p type uh, extrinsic semiconductor formation takes place again we have silicon with four valence electrons intrinsic silicon then we have let's say boron trivalent impurity with three valence electrons so when a small amount of this trivalent impurity let's say boron is added to this intrinsic silicon three of these valence electrons of this trivalent impurity engage in covalent bond formation process of with this three valence electrons three out of four valence electrons of intrinsic silicon like this 
okay three valence electrons of boron form covalent bonds with three silicon valence electrons so three covalent bonds are formed one there is a shortage of one electron in this covalent bond with silicon there is one shortage vacancy vacant electronic site which is required to form a covalent bond with this excess or we not excess this silicon fourth silicon uh, valence electron so this creates a vacancy in this covalent bond and this vacancy is called as hole okay this hole or vacant electronic site has a strong force of attraction for neighboring electrons so what happens is that electrons from nearby silicon atoms they rush to occupy this spot so when they rush from somewhere else to occupy this spot they create another hole there to cover that spot another electron rushes to occupy that place creating a hole somewhere else so like this the hole the the site the location of the hole it continuously changes so in p type semiconductors holes are the majority charge carriers actually hole is a hypothetical concept the holes are nothing but vacant electronic sites holes are nothing it is the movement of the electron to occupy these vacant electronic sites which creates more and more vacant electronic sites and therefore we say the hole is moving actually the holes are not moving it is the electrons that are moving to occupy this vacant electronic site creating uh, more and more holes so it is the vacant electronic site which is called as a hole okay current conduction is taking place due to electrons but it is because of this vacancy that's why the electrons are compelled to move so that's why we say hole are the majority charge carriers in p type semiconductors so it is assumed as to be an opposite of electrons so that's why it is taken as positive that's why the name p type semiconductors okay so this is how uh, the formation of n type and p type semiconductors uh, take place so the same thing uh, can be done with case of germanium instead of silicon if we take germanium the same thing will take place or we take any other pentavalent or trivalent impurity the same principle will follow so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much